in a world where laughter was king. Uh, no in a world, Jack. What do you mean, no in a world? It's not that kind of movie. Oh? Okay. In a land that... No in a land either. In a time... No, I don't think so. In a land before time... It's about a comedian, Jack. One man... No... When your life is no longer your own... What, what does that mean? When everything you know is wrong... That's wrong. In an outpost... No... On the edge of space... There's no space... A girl... No... Two girls... No... Now... No... More than ever... Stop it... A renegade cop... Ugh, I hate you... A robot renegade cop... You're fired... You're fired... No, you're actually fired. I'm fired. Get out of the booth, Jack. No, I like it in here. the world still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it so. Kyrie, the earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So, whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> this is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Straight to you from a large spaceship currently winning the war with the mainstream scientific community. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is busy buying up real estate in Arizona, planning to sell oceanfront property in 2040 when the Arctic has completely melted. I guess George Strait actually predicted the future. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, you are not very good at the Internet. For those of you listening to this on YouTube, you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And yes, Caroline, if it is not October 23rd, 2018, then you are listening to a rerun. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery goes exactly like this. I'm sorry. If you were right, I'd agree with you. Who said that? The late Robin Williams. Mark Sargent 2018 Flat Earth Challenge is in effect. This is my personal declaration of war from Flat Earth against mainstream science. I, Mark Sargent, hereby put forth a challenge to any university, foreign or domestic, to loan me a NASA-approved self-contained spacesuit 
put me in a vacuum chamber and pull the switch. For more information on this, please check out Flat Earth Clues number 13, The Lost Nail. Announcements. Who's got the announcements? I do. Uh, First off, thank you to everyone who was part of my whirlwind weekend. Uh, The Flat Earthers that went to Hot Springs, Arkansas for the Hot Springs Film Festival. It was a lot of fun down there, uh, the people that flew me into that festival. And then less than 24 hours later, I was up in Bellingham, Washington with the director and producer, uh, Daniel Clark and Caroline. And we were watching Behind the Curve again. Actually, I didn't watch it that time. I went out to dinner with the, with the director and then we came in at the end. If you guys are curious what, what I'm talking about, check out BehindTheCurveFilm.com. So far, it's doing very, very well in the film festival community. We have been in 18 festivals in five different countries. Uh, That's pretty impressive. And there's a whole bunch of showings. Uh, Check it out. Uh, I'll probably rattle them off either during a segment of this show, what showings are still out there in the United States. Because remember, it's not public yet. It's only in the film festival circuit. It is not for general release. So if you go, please do not bootleg it because I think it wouldn't do the film justice. Also, the billboard, which was backed by Flat Earth member DITRH, that just went up in Denver, Colorado. And you can check that out by just typing in Flat Earth and saying the filter to today because the CBS News team in Denver, Colorado covered it. And they also spoke with Bob Nodell from Globusters, who did a fantastic job during the interview. Of course, yes, part of it was also due to editing. And I think they knew our concerns because we thought the national team from CBS didn't treat us as fair. It, I, I'm kind of mixed on the CBS national feed where Patricia, Patricia Steer, I thought, did a fantastic job uh, on her side of the interview. Uh, and actually, I thought Mad Mike wasn't interviewed too badly either. Uh, but the rest of it, I, I think, you know, they weren't necessarily smashing us, but it, it couldn't it could have been better. So I'm sorry, there's stuff coming in the chat room. So let me count that as the people saying stuff like say, uh Okay, and yep, yep, and um, right. Sorry, I got distracted by Paul on the plane. I have to, and you know, just about anything at this point, I'm going to blame on Paul on the plane because he comes on the show before me and he, I don't know, he just messes up my, my rhythm most of the time. So if you remember, just don't listen to Paul on the plane, whatever he says. I don't care if it's YouTube or Truth Frequency Radio, just kind of a nuisance, really. Uh, let's see, what else? Phone numbers to call in for the show tonight are 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. If you're in the UK, you can dial your country code and then 442033932871. And if you're calling just to listen, and none of you use this number, I don't know why, you know who I'm talking to, and that's 605-472-9131. And that, oh, I'm sorry, there's one more thing, and that is, I missed the absolute obvious, which was the conference coming up. Uh, Paul on the plane had Robbie Davidson as a guest, and Robbie is in absolutely full speed mode when it comes to the conference. You can check that out at fe2018.com. And as of now, the schedule is set and all the players are all listed out for you. Uh, there's going to be some surprises there. There's some some guests and speakers that you probably didn't even know were there a month ago. So check it out if you get a chance. I am not speaking until the second morning. I am doing the opening segment for the second, second morning and a Q&A segment. And then I'm going to be doing the Flatties, the Flat Earth Video Award Show with Patricia Steer at the end of the second night. So that would be the last event on Friday night. So come early, stay late. It's going to be an absolute blast. I encourage anyone, you know, if, you, if you're out there and you, you think and you would be incorrect in your thinking that there's I, – there, I, I get these emails all the time where I don't have any Flat Earthers around me. I don't get any Flat Earthers around me. Well, you do. Uh, But if you want to absolutely guarantee that everyone in the room is on the same page as you, go to the Flat Earth Conference in Denver. It is going. Of course, go to the regional meetups, too, if you can. But there will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people at this thing, and it'll be better than last year. And um, I went to the Canadian conference up in Alberta, Canada. And if that is any indication of what Denver will be, it's going to be amazing so seriously don't miss it check it out go to fe2018.com okay 
Let's see. Phone lines, phone lines. Oh, right. Uh, funny. The Tosh.0 thing and the welder. Yep. Peanut gallery is egging me on. Okay. Did I do something wrong with the phone lines? I don't have anybody in the phone lines right now. Holy smokes. All right. Where is everybody? Is somebody else running a big hangout at the moment? As Krusty the Clown would say, is this Saturday? <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyone wants to call in, please, 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. And Peanut Gallery says the other number does not work. I don't know if that's true, but we'll find out. Because uh, I'm, I'm looking at the settings on the 720-8976-111, which is my other line. And I've got it forwarded at 213-233. I'm looking at the numbers here, 213-233-3998. Uh, so... And there's a phone. Just like that. Just like magic. Here comes a call. Ready? We're going to pick up 304. 304, you're on with Strange World right now. Just you and me. What's going on? What's up, Mark? Magic, huh? <laughs> yeah, just like magic. Crazy. Yeah. Let's get this going, man. Ask the question. What's up with the polar north-south pole fight? It's oh. a no-go, huh? Oh, you, that's hey, you know what? That's old news, but I'm I'm more than willing to bring that up because I don't think we've actually talked about it on the show. And that was earlier in the year. There was going to be a scheduled long haul flight, pole to pole, north south, north pole to south pole. You know, cir- polar circumnavigation of the globe, and a big extensive website. It was going to cost you, I think, like what ten thousand dollars or something like that to, to get on this thing. And, you know, one one shot deal. And there were certain restrictions. You couldn't bring on scientific equipment, obviously, because they didn't want any flat earthers to go on there. And I'm pretty sure there was one of the YouTube channels. I think his name was and I, if I screw this up, don't hold it against me. Uh, Greater Sapien. He wanted to do it. In fact, he ponied up the money to do it. He like a like a crowdfunding thing, like a GoFundMe thing to do it. And. Several months ago, not that long ago, but several months ago, the site just goes down. I mean, it's not like they, you know, did the formal thing where, you know, they had to cancel stuff and refund the money and there was a little press release. It The site's just gone, it, you, like erased. Yeah. It, it doesn't go anywhere. And, of course, there's, there's still news stories that link to it, but the link's to, it's a dead link. So, yeah, not not a big surprise at all. You announce the story because power perceived. So now in some people's mind, it's like, no, no, there was this polar flight, but it's it'll work in our favor because, oh, yeah, really? Go to that news article. Now click on the link. Oh, see, because links don't go dead anymore. You know, once the project's there, they just leave it up as archived. You know, the, the website will, technically should never, ever go down once it's up. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, never, never happened. Never going to happen. Same thing with the Mars mission and hydrogen fuel cell cars and all sorts of futuristic things. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I appreciate you for informing me. I think it happened six months ago, but I, I just, you know, it went back in my mind. Was like, it, was it actually six months ago when it, when it went down? Boy, if it did, that was a long time ago. I don't, I don't know if it was six, well, I, but it was, but yeah, it went down. Okay. I mean, I, somebody told me and it was like this running joke where, because we had, one of our debunkers, Greater uh, Sapien, he bought this trip just to go after Flat Earth. That was the whole point of him taking yep. this trip was he could shut down. He would be like the the Flat Earth killer. And it turned. And then, of course, people are going, dude, you should you know, give people their money back. It's like, what are you talking about? He goes, I gave the money to them. And so there's no way. I mean, I felt like I, I was sided with him on that one. It's like, no, 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 no. If I pay the money, if I give the money to whatever ticket holder it is and they just run off with it. No, I'm in no obligation to pay back the money in that case. So, Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. all right. Well, I appreciate that. A quick shout out to, uh, I guess, Ray Goodwin, you know, the surveyor, 27 year. He's still waiting on someone to challenge him. Uh, right on. At the, the beach. Right on. Yeah, no, I love him. Nope. I, he is, nope. He's. I love his enthusiasm, and uh, hopefully he will get his chance to shine. Cool. I appreciate it, Mark. Uh, go ahead and put me on mute, and I'll uh, keep listening. All righty. I'll put you on mute right now. Here we go. Okay, let's jump over to 905, area code 905. You're on with Strange World. We're talking Flat Earth. What are we talking about? 
Hey, Mark. Uh, sorry, but if you say you don't have any calls, I'm going to call. So I, look, you're not. You okay, are. Okay, first, first off, you're not Wes. Okay, you're you're definitely an octave or two above <laughs> Wes. I actually don't mind when you call. First off, it's international because you're calling from uh, from Canada, and I love yeah. I love international calls. And second, no, no, what, what are you kidding? You're one of, you're one of the few people in the country that's actually hung out with me. Well, you got a few. But, well, I know, but yeah, I mean, I mean um, compared compared to the amount of people that have heard my stuff, you know, because I haven't gone, uh, I haven't gone to that. I, many I wish there were more. Well, no, I I will meet a whole bunch of people at the conference. I not trust me. I mean, I've I've met you know, like I just met more people down in Arkansas and more people up in Bellingham, and you know, I've done meetups in Los Angeles and um, you know, Seattle and Oregon and all sorts of other fun little places. So no worries. We're good. We'll we'll get there. It's all right. Yeah. The point the point yeah. is you uh, can call in you can call in any time you want. And I will, especially <laughs> if you say there's no calls. And Jaron learned that the hard way. Uh, no, but, I uh, no. My only concern yeah. with you, my only concern with you is your timing, and that is you'll call like. Three minutes to the break, and you've got six minutes to say something. And it's like, dude, what am I supposed to do with you? So, yeah, uh, timing is not my uh, my friend. It's, <laughs> it's just one of those things. That's all right. Boy, but anyway, uh, yes, love you, Mark. Uh, Scuba Dracula has a meetup coming up in November. Uh, yep. I want to yep. say the fourth. I know, I know, on I know. Saturday. Hey. He emailed me, and in fact, it's in my to-do pile for tomorrow, which is the Toronto meetup uh, from Johnny Scuba D. It's Sunday, November 4th, 2.30 to 6 at the Keating Channel Pub and Grill. So there you go. And where we extra... held our last one. Is yeah. that where you held the last one? Yeah, we, we were there last year. All right. Well, I can... Yeah, a bunch of flat earthers uh, got up there. Did I do the promo for it? Sorry, did I do the promo? Oh yeah, for you, totally mirrored, uh, yeah you totally mirrored. Oh, yeah, you totally mirrored. Oh yeah, yeah. The Here's the link. Yeah, I'm sorry. Here's the he. Uh, he's already got a promo for it. So I, I'm. Yeah, it'll take me two seconds to to put up another one. I would have. In fact, I would have done that one before the show, but somebody had me do one for. Uh, oh, it was Paul on the plane uh, for Dublin in uh, Ireland. Ah. I hear that's. I hear that's a place. So, yeah. I did so uh, this. Does the peanut gallery actually have a YouTube channel? That's my question right now. Uh, no. Uh, where he's changed his name to peanut gallery. No. 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 Well, no. 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 Well, really, no. no. I, I, well, I mean, he, I, well, okay. One, we're not uh, officially <laughs> supposed to talk about, and I was distracted. I'm sorry. Somebody sent me something in chat, and uh, it was a a little bit spicy. And so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm somewhat distracted by that. Uh, no, he's I, got a no, he's got a wrench here in Zulu's, the yeah, peanut gallery. Yeah, yeah peanut gallery. And yeah. I'm sorry, but under the peanut gallery or peanut gallery. Oh, oh so I'm probably... skeptical. All right, hang on. Let me look. So peanut gallery messages me, and I have an account, so I can monitor chats. Smiley face. Okay. <laughs> All right, so there you go. He, I just want to be sure it's him and not. No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, you're thinking. Oh, I know because you're a conspiracy guy. You're thinking. Wait, is it him or is it like a fake account? Yeah, I, I got you. Like, and like Mark. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Mark Zulu gave him a wrench automatically when uh, he saw he was there. But oh no, no, I Mark still got a question. What? Well, today, like. Uh, Moments ago, mm -hmm. and sorry, Peanut Gallery, we've been talking in uh, the chat uh, on the YT. But uh, how did you, how do you, have you ever spoken with Peanut Gallery? Uh, never personally, no. Yeah, you see, how do you know it's not a woman? I mean, it's 2018. <laughs> all women matter. Yeah, you don't want to be but, caught making uh, generalizations like that. So, Peanut Gallery is a woman. 
no, <laughs> I just, oh God, you're killing me. No, no, Peanut Gallery is a guy. <laughs> I'm so confused. He's he's a friend. That he, look, it's not a huge secret. He is. I'll give you a hint. Ready? Ready? He is one uh, of the uh, he's one of the subject matter experts. Oh, oh, well, that makes me. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll question things in my own mind. Well, there you, uh, there you, you pick up somebody else. Okay, <laughs> Thanks, okay. Mark. I love you, okay. man. I'll talk Keep to up you the good work. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye. Okay, who am I picking up next? Uh, let's go with five one zero area code. I think five one zero. You're on a strange world. What's happening? What's going on, Mark? Hey, what's what's happening out there in the impossible city of Pittsburgh, California? Man, it's been a good night for me. Man, I got an early route, so. Uh... I was able to call in in the first the first hour or the first nice. segment. So. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Anything uh, in particular on your mind this evening? Uh, man, you know, I, I told myself this time last year that I wasn't going to be at the last minute. You know, to get myself together to come to the conference. Uh, but here I am, yet yeah, at, at, at the at the at the at the bottom of the ninth. Well, it's not the bottom of the night, but it's getting there. Next next week, it will be the bottom of the night. So you're like in the eighth right now. Yeah, people are kind of fidgeting in their seats at the moment. Yeah. There you go. There you go. But uh, but but I'm making it out. You know, I anticipated bringing some family with me, but that may not happen. But, man, uh, if I got a hitchhike, I definitely would be there. And if I was single, I would probably, you know, Roomed up with some with some with some young flatter lady, but I'm taking been off the market for quite some time now. And if my wife was to ever hear this, honey, you know I'm off the market and I'm all yours. So absolutely, don't make sure we don't start no rumors. So yeah, if but, you, uh, yeah, but looking forward to it. Cool, cool. That's really great. Yeah, and it's it'll be shorter. It'll be a shorter um, commute for this one because it is in Denver, so it's not it's not nearly as yeah. bad as heading out to Raleigh. But uh, there'll be a lot of people there, yeah. and I, it, I, because yeah. it's centrally located, a lot of people are going to drive, uh, and it'll it'll be fun. It's I, I, every, everyone's I like really the, really. I like this promo that I saw. Oh, you like the one that um, I think uh, Rick Hummer did the uh, the narrative on it, where it was like, <laughs> you know, Flat Earth 2018, taking it to the next level. You know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time, yeah, yeah. Even going through the lineup and everything. Who was that? Yeah, it's good. Uh, who was that again? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's his name again? What channel? Who's who? Uh, who actually who actually uh, talked about the lineup and everything? Oh, Rick Hunt. Uh, the Globebusters had it on there. Yeah, Rick Hunt. But there was another gentleman too who 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 uh, who was uh, speaking about all the guests, all, all the speakers that was going to be there. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Oh man, can't remember. he was on. T- he was That's on okay. my time. Know. Anyway, uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I did have one question, something, you know, you, you know how it is, man. Since this whole thing started, you think about stuff that you never thought about before. So I guess right. the question I have, what's supposed to be the, what's supposed to be the, the stronger, greater force? Is, is, is the vacuum of space supposed to be stronger, stronger than, 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 uh, than, the, uh, than gravity itself? Uh, you know, it sh- it, sh- it should be, it should be stronger, but they say that gravity is the stronger force. And I would yeah, absolutely, yeah. I would absolutely disagree. I've never seen a vacuum yeah. lose in, you know, look at every vacuum chamber test that's been done down here. Vacuum wins, plain yeah. and simple. Vacuum is yeah. a ridiculously yeah, I, strong force. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and I just can't help but just constantly keep coming back to this, this whole notion. I, I, I literally believe that most people who even believe in the whole globe aspect, they don't they don't even understand the the, 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 the the different type of motions that they say that we're dealing with. I mean really when people think about the globe, they just think about us just spinning. I'm pretty sure a lot of people think we're just spinning in, you know, just spinning in one particular spot. Right. But when you understand that there's four different motions, that's a lot of motions and that and that all these supposed satellites and everything is dragging along just perfectly fine, you yeah. know. Uh, not not losing. Uh, it's just it's just it's, it's a lot, man. And yeah. not only and not only to mention, but 
we are because they tell us that they tell us that space is forever expanding. So we're, we're we're not even a beach ball. We're like a grain of sand in the ocean. Right. And you mean to tell me that that grain of sand in the ocean, we know what happens to it, you know. Right. But yet and still in a vacuum of space, we're just, you know, everything is just. Oh, yeah. Stable. And, yeah. You know, stable as could be. Yeah. No, don't don't get me stable started on that. Be. The, the graphic that most people don't watch, and you know because you've seen it a whole bunch of times, is that the whole solar system is flying like a plate sideways through space yeah. at half a million miles an hour. And yet we can set probes in between planets and they just don't get lost, you know, in the in the velocity. You know, in the because there's these moments, you know, places like between if you believe space between like Earth and Mars, there's these dead spots where there's basically no gravity, no gravitational force. And yet we send, you know, these tiny little probes out there and they just don't get lost. Like you throw a golf ball out the window of your car. Oh, yeah, that golf ball is going to hang with you for one or two bounces. And then that's it. They're gone because they're going to lose momentum. Uh, not only that, but the, you know, the meteors, you know, people say, oh, you know, a, a meteor or an asteroid's coming in at 10,000 miles an hour or whatever it is. It's like, no, 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 no. If you're flying through space at half a million miles an hour in one direction, technically you could have asteroids coming at you even faster than that from the front and but never talk about it. Yeah. It's like, you, I mean, if you even had a rock the size of a car hit this place at half a million miles an hour, even that would wipe us out. And yet nobody ever seems concerned. Nobody. Uh, I, I could go on forever yeah, now. Yeah. But I like a bunch of hogwash to me. And then, you know, uh, I guess my too, last man. thing, you know, when. Uh, yeah. And like Low Busters was saying, uh, yes, uh, yes. Well, I, I'll always listen to it today. But like they said on the Sunday show, where everybody want to use the train analogy or the, uh, the plane analogy and not take in consideration that, you know, you're inside. And more importantly than that. When that when that when that plane banks or when that train takes a uh, takes a corner, you feeling it, you know. Oh yeah. And not only that, like uh, and like what uh, 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 um, uh, the Mar guy was uh, really harping on. Uh, he said, you know, get on that plane and run to the back and see how easy it is versus trying to go to the front. Right. You know, so don't tell me that we ain't supposed to be feeling all this motion that's going on. Absolutely. Sorry, that, that's just. Sound Absolutely. Like, take, sound like a yeah. fairy tale to me. But hey. Yeah, yeah. Take take a take a yeah, bath on a yacht on a yacht sometime and watch what happens to the water. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, I know you probably got some other calls, man. Just want to call in, check in, okay. and uh yeah, looking forward to the to the conference, man. And uh let's keep this thing flat, keep waking folks up. One 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 person at a time. Right on, right on. I'm looking forward to seeing you, man. And of course, yeah. Oh yeah, appreciate- oh yeah, oh yeah, just one caveat. What? Oh yeah, one caveat. Uh, I don't know if you heard on uh, the Marvels, but they say that uh, in the box office that the new space movie ain't even look. It's uh, it's not looking promising. It's not. It's not. It's not doing well at all for various <laughs> reasons. Um, one one of the reasons, and I know we got thirty seconds of the music. One of the reasons is because it's yeah. been so long since we've been to the moon, two full generations, that no young people have any interest in this at all. In fact, if you're under the age of 60, you probably don't have an interest in it. And the second thing is because, well, there's a lot of stuff floating around. The moon mission has been in question for a long, long time. So people there is like, yeah, you know what? Why why should I go see this? So and of course, the American flag isn't, it. isn't shown in it. Anyway, um, we got a roll. So, hey, thanks, man, for yeah. calling in. And uh, we'll talk soon. OK. All right. Keep it flat. Peace. All right. All right bye bye. Okay, uh, phone number to call in is 213-233-3998. We will pick up 916 when we come back. We are T F R Frequency Radio.
Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. Hope you guys are enjoying your evening, whatever you're doing, sitting on the couch, munching chips, browsing videos, or lying in a bathtub thinking of me. And a quick shout out to Brian from Humana Story, who is probably listening because he is responsible for the reason I have a Warcraft guild called Flat Earth. And uh, if anyone's out there still playing Warcraft, because it's still up and running, I think this is the last expansion, and it should be after 14 years. That's a ridiculous amount of time. Unheard of. Never, never been done before. Uh, by all means, hit me up. Shoot me an email or come in game. My my name is literally Mark Sargent in the channel, and the guild is called Flat Earth. There's only one of us. It's a casual guild. Do a little, you know, help you level, do some fun stuff. And if you want to come in, be happy to accommodate you i got tons of gold and you know we can we can take care of whatever you need phone calls before we do that let's check the chat real quick uh the flat earth conference after that cbs thing is being picked up peanut gallery says within the last four hours they are all uh, all the news stations in colorado are picking it up of course it's the most interesting story so yeah all right let's jump over to the phone lines pick up nine one five 916? 916. 916, you're on with Strange World. What is happening? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm Shauna Collins. It's Michelle. Everyone, it's Michelle. F.E. Mishka. Okay. Guess the <laughs> first thing you said when you said, I'm going to pick up the next line, whether they're, they're eating chips. Guess what? Guess what? Listen, listen. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I can't believe that synchronicity right there, man. That is I synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> what, well, what kind? Um, you might as well yeah. give it up. What, what kind of chips are they? They better be good. Uh, Chipotle. I I wanted Chipotle. I had a craving, and here it is. Oh, nice, nice. That's cool. Delivered so what, by my wonderful boyfriend. Ah, uh, that's nice. That that's her uh, subliminal way of saying, "Do not hit on me or use innuendos while you're talking to me on the phone." Okay, so uh, no, no, no. <laughs> that's even better. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, what hot sex are we talking about right now? Um, my wet burrito. <laughs> it's terrible. Did you just come up with that? I know. No, I'm literally having Chipotle, dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. There's people. You know, the internet's gonna take and just run with that. That's, uh, hey, that's you, a that's a meme. Go there. I took it there. That's a meme waiting to happen. Yeah, it's me and my wet burrito. Oh my god! Careful, careful what you wish for. Yeah, yeah. So you're you are definitely going to the conference. Mm, mm -hmm. Are you are you yeah, working uh, it? Are you working Darla. it? Yeah, yeah. Darla and I are going to work it, um, or we're volunteering it. Was we are grateful that we have the opportunity to go and to help out and contribute, nice. and I'm so beyond excited. Um, her and I will be doing registration with, I think, David Weiss and his wife, Paige. Nice. And I think Cammy. I'm pretty sure Cammy's doing right. I think we'll all be doing registration. So we'll get to meet everyone. It'll be Yay. fantastic. Yay. What, what day are you uh, rolling in? Um, so I'm going to fly out of here Tuesday about 8 o'clock. And Cammy's going to pick us up from the airport around, like, just after midnight. Oh, you're flying late. Yeah, yeah, because I was supposed to work. Till Wait a five, minute, why? And then I why oh, took the day is off. it? Are you are you bouncing off of a city? Because it shouldn't take that long from Northern California to Denver. Oh, you're losing one time yeah, zone. Like three but... hours. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, well. no, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, no worries. No worries. <laughs> That's curious. Um, but yeah, so we and then we're gonna set up and everything, and then we'll go to the billboard. I'm sure. I'm hoping. Yeah. Have do you you, sure. you know it went up today? Oh, it went up today. Or did it go up yesterday? No, I'm sorry. It went up no. yesterday. Wow, I'm losing track of time. Well, because uh, uh, Bob from Globusters did the interview. Yes, and they yes, yes. The okay, so that was the same one. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, aren't yeah. we still going over there at 3 o'clock for something? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's op, but yeah, we're going to do the, the big op, the, the big photo op. There. Yes, okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure the media will follow us because apparently all the network affiliates are on this story as of three hours ago. So they're, yeah, they're, that was a really good interview. That's a great, that's a great sign. But of course, why not? I mean, it's Denver. 
It's like, what interesting, no offense, I lived out there for 20 years. What interesting thing are we looking at right now? You got some NFL football, sure, but the Broncos, eh. I mean, so yeah. this is an interesting story. Plus, this is the first time they've hosted it, and it's going to be, well, it's going to be great. I said they painted it in a good light, you know, like it's not, it wasn't, I, I was like, wow, that it was actually, there was nothing negative that they said. It was, um, I liked it. I liked That's, the picture they portrayed there. I, I did too. That's part of the natural process, though. When uh, a group gets bigger and bigger, like anything, right? You mm-hmm. all of a sudden realize, yeah. like, hey, maybe we shouldn't upset them because <laughs> of the backlash <laughs> that may ensue. And it's true. I mean, yeah. you, I mean, you've seen what happens when flat earthers get attacked just on YouTube. They uh, we dude, just I'm dis- not crazy before. We descend on people, and I mean, hey, look, not not in a mean way. It's like not. A, I'm never. I'm never ever calling out during the show. It's like, all right, here's a library you need to burn down tomorrow. You know, nothing like that. <laughs> it's, it's just that people will get. You know, they get really, really enthusiastic about flat Earth, and and it's like, how dare you speak of us like that? Yeah. And you'll rue the day. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I can't I get. I, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, um, the documentary, by the way, is going to be showing at the Denver Film Festival the week prior. So okay. Bob is going to be going to it. He's been given tickets. I do not know if he's going to be asked to speak or if they're going to announce him in the audience or not, like they did with me in Toronto. Okay. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. But there, but but the interesting thing is there'll be a lot of flat earthers there. You know, there, the, there's a big yeah, flat earth contingency sure. in Colorado. And so I think between, you know, Bob will announce it on Globusters and, and be like, yeah, why don't you come down to the theater? Because there's three showings. And he's, oh, wow. you know, yeah, so it's, again, I have to warn everybody like I have been doing. If you go, it is not, it is not a Flat Earth Victory Lap movie. And flat, in fact, I, you know, yeah. I just went, I just went to one up in Bellingham, Washington. And you know who went? Uh, flat Earth Fokker. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he was up there, so and I'm he silently and he, eat this chip. And <laughs> well, no, no, I told him, but he, com- he came out because he because he was in it twice. He you know he wasn't interviewed directly, but he was in it, and he he told me because yeah, it's not a hit piece, and I go yeah, I know it's not a hit piece. Yeah, I it's you know it's it is I hate to use the term fair and balanced because people think I'm talking about Fox News, but it it was fair. It's, it's, that's all yeah. I can say. And I, I one, see it. I'm, I, you know, I don't expect that it's going to, you know, I don't, I don't have preconceived notions or expectations. So I'm going into it blind, a canvas, just paint it on me. You'll like the fact that you recognize so many people. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. there's blah, 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 oh, yeah. you know, you'll, you'll go through literally, it's like, oh yeah, you know, everybody in it. So yeah. it'll be, but I'll, I'll, um, if I get a chance, uh, right after this segment, going to the third segment, I will rattle off the, uh, all the show times, uh, all the festivals that are going to be coming up. The, um, I have a quote for you from the peanut gallery. Oh, yeah, I know. Right. You should feel special. If <laughs> women, women didn't exist, all the money in the world would have no meaning. And that was from Aristotle Onassis. Who, the, the man who married okay, Jackie, funny. Jackie Kennedy. Think about, think about. Oh my God, I forgot to bring this up. Okay, so I always had a hunch that the peanut gallery was a woman. There was something that just spoke to me that said I knew. It, and then you said it could be a woman. <laughs> so now I'm just laughing at the thought of the peanut gallery being a woman. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I, I, I don't. I I, I, hey, look, I'm not judging all God's children. Uh, you know, if he or she is offended, I did not mean anything by it. <laughs> hey, it's it's 20, 2018. All, right, all genders matter. Hey, uh, nice. All, everything's offensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you. Thank you for calling in. And I'm sure we'll talk yep. again because there's a couple shows before all the right, conference. Have a good so. night, man. All right. You Thanks too. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. Let's uh, jump over to. We'll take this call and then we will jump and I will go and I will read a lot. Read a lot. I will rattle off the uh, places that you can see the movie before it become goes public. So let's go to seven three seven area code seven three seven. You're on with Strange World. What's happening, Mark? Yeah. You should definitely take up Red's rhetoric and debate him. 
think it'd be a great <laughs> idea. Because Reds, it'd be good. Red's rhetoric. Red's rhetoric. Okay, a couple couple things yeah. about about Red's rhetoric. And yes, I, of course, I know who he is. He's been hanging around for several years now. I He's don't. He's a science student. I, uh, look, I, I don't debate anybody with, with a, that doesn't use the real name. I, I just don't Why? anymore. Uh, Why not? For, for several reasons. One, because you could be anyone. If look, if you're, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to pick too much because look, I, I love good debating skills as much as the next guy. Uh, but it's not skills. <laughs> it's not skills. It's just we, this. This whole movement has questions. And they're answered by people, and we call this, you know, hate. And it's because it doesn't fit into the scientific philosophy, you know. So what, why why red why reds uh, over anybody else? Like, are are you speaking Be- because on behalf of, of red? Are you speaking- red red. Go ahead. Red has very very red is very detailed in his answers. He doesn't come at it from a position of humiliation. We he, talked I mean, about the guy. Would, the guy uses more profanity than Richard Pryor. He, the man, well, has a mouth on him, and it does not. Bo- it does not. Go- profanity does not de- denote disrespect. In and, fact, but uh, it's not a rebuttal. Jaronism, go ahead. It is a re- no, 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 no. It's not. It's not about rebutting. It's about explaining questions because that's how this whole movement got started. Yeah, of course. So there are of questions, course. and you want the questions. Like, for instance, the vacuum. How does, you know, putting you in a vacuum suit or putting you in a space suit, putting you in a vacuum chamber? Right. You know, Red, Red can explain to everybody that a vacuum on Earth is nowhere near like a vacuum in space. Ah, very different and things. that's good. In fact, that, people out there that can, that can answer them. And the whole beauty about Flat Earth is that it is people getting interested in directly confirming, uh, you know, things that are said to be facts, et cetera. Right, and right. <clears throat> the problem is that there is a greater uh, culture of, you know, just being very, uh, I guess you could say, uh, hesitant to, you know, uh, give validation to certain authorities. And I understand right. that. <clears throat> However, the game, the game of, you know, just kind of stepping around the reality of, hey, we want answers and they're out there. And so what I think Flat Earth will become is the first Earth movement. It will become this first Earth movement where we realize that the containing of, you know, certain information can lead to a longer wait for us to, you know, look at things directly. And so... Sure. No, I, 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 again, I, I understand. Look, I, there are certain people that I that I listen to when they debate, and you know, I have I have enjoyed sort of their tactics over the years. Uh, Red's rhetoric, his style is not the type. He comes off. Look, come on, let, let, let's let's be blunt here. He comes off as extremely aggressive. And he, even if he doesn't want to be necessarily only, demeaning, only only because. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but only oh, no, because right. he is—he has tried to answer these questions, sure. and people say, in spite of his answers, that there is something alternative to his, you know, understanding of science. And so, uh, which is fine. In that, in that the, case, it would yeah, be yeah. an ag- agree to disagree type of of thing. I think. Look, I I. Look, I have listened to some of his stuff again, going all the way back to what was the end of 2015 when he started kicking in. Uh, I wish he would make just sit down and make more videos or just make a video, you know, you know, breaking it down like, uh, uh, oh, Professor Stick or Cy Dan Man or some of the other guys. Look, I don't mind, you know, the guys coming from the other side. Uh, I just, just, I'm sorry, he just rubs me the wrong way in, in his tactics. So, and plus, again, he doesn't. The other thing, and I'm never, ever going to get away from this, which is you got to step up and put yourself out there. We do. You know, my my name is out there, my phone number, my address. You know, I'm Mark Sargent. 
uh, who the other people who is Sidan Man, who is Professor Stick, who is you know all all the others, and I, I don't want to rattle them off. Uh, they got to you know if well, you want to be. I think it's I think it's very I think it's very noble to put your name out there. However, some people just don't have that luxury for certain reasons. And it's, you, I think what changes the, from the sound from the from the sound of it, it sounds like red. Red is involved with aeronautics, and he's professionally involved with them. And so, I think if it were, if he were to come out and say, I mean, he's already been doxxed. I mean, everybody's been doxxed. It's not hard oh. to put two and two together. Uh, but I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, read, I haven't seen anything on him so, as far as the doxing goes. So, well, that that withstanding, he is answering. I mean, that it's not a debate. It's just. Somebody who is passionate, so passionate about, right. you know, science that they want to answer questions that people are asking. However, they're not continuing to ask questions after the answers. Right. I mean, that's right. the problem. Jerry Let Nelson's me... debate with, if anybody has seen Red debate, a quote unquote debate, Jerryism, it's right. pretty eye opening to anybody within the Flat Earth movement because it's, Literally, just Jaronism saying, you know, got it, got it, got all it. these explanations, all these explanations that consistently explain reality. I mean, that's what they have. That's what reality is supposed to be. It's supposed to be explained, not right. you know, just doubt. Let me, let me, let me do this. Let me end it with this because unfortunately, I do have to grab other people. Um, when I was when I went, in fact, this just happened a couple of days ago. When I went out to the uh, the Hot Springs Film Festival, and I was literally sitting next to a, a French woman who was an astrophysicist, and she and I, and it was an hour long car ride from the from the airport to the hotel, and she figured it out immediately because the guy in front, we you know, he asked what we did, and we compared stuff, and then all of a sudden she chimes in, and we went at it for probably forty five minutes straight. And there was nothing I could do. I mean, look, she's got a master's degree in astrophysics, and but she, it's she, not it's not it's, it's not about doing something. It is about trying to get an answer to a question. I mean, that's all. Oh, no, 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 I I get question. I I get that, but but I'm saying that sooner or later, depending on who you, the type of person you are, if you're so entrenched, neither side is getting over out of that trench, and he's one of those guys. It's not about he's Kevin the what? No, it's not. It's not about trenches. It is about a question is a question. We all say words. Everybody well, hears the same. If sure, you sure, sure. Look at the words. Yeah, yeah. If you if you infer the words differently, then there can be a discussion about premises. However, yeah. premises withstanding, water is water, like you said. Fire yeah. is fire, etc. Yeah. And our planet is very fortunately, we can see things very, very far away with the aid of our planet. And it's actually an amazing explanation for physical reality when you look yeah. into the reality of you know, atmosphere, refraction, etc. Right. It's actually incredibly easy to understand. And it's fascinating because everybody in Flat Earth is like, hey, there is some doubt here. And that doubt fuels, you know, direct engagement. And that's OK. That's that's what America is about. It is about getting people engaged by being the necessary evil. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And so to the degree to which the greater, the bigger institutions to the plate with everybody. And yes, many of them, many people, it does get heated, et cetera. But the reality is that there are questions like 9-11. There are questions that are still unexplained. Of course. And people are going out there just wanting these questions answered and when the yeah. questions are you know uh a sidestep and people are you know made fun of for asking these questions that's not good for anybody red has never made fun of anyone for asking a question he only only responds with a little bit of zest in the event of somebody <laughs> saying that red uh, uh, is doing all right anything all right it's a, other it's a I, I I hear you. No, no. Tr trust me. I am. I appreciate your enthusiasm and and p going to bat for him. Uh, you saying that in, in his downplaying his his stuff to a little bit of zest. I think it's a little bit extreme. But anyway, we will figure out something. We'll figure out somebody that he can talk to eventually. So thank you very much, very much for calling.
And uh, before we get to the next caller, we are going to rattle off the showtimes for Behind the Curve documentary. These are the only places you can see them until general theatrical release. So here we go. Uh, let's see. The Bellingham one just happened. The Salt Lake City one is actually running as we speak at the in Salt Lake City, Utah. The is going to be one tomorrow. If you happen to be in Poland at the American Film Festival, don't think you're going to be making that unless somebody knows somebody in Poland and you're on your way there right now. The Portland Film Festival in Portland, Oregon, that's happening at 515 uh, tomorrow as well. On Thursday, the 25th, it's also going to be playing at the American Film Festival in Poland. On the 26th, it's going to be in Lake Placid, New York. On the 28th, it's going to be in Portland at the Portland Film Festival. On November 3rd, it's going to be in Denver, Colorado for the Denver Film Festival. That's one of three showings. We'll rattle off the other two in a second. On November 3rd, I'm sorry, November 4th, it's going to be in the uh, Salt, oh boy, that's in Ontario, Canada. Salt State Marie, I don't know how to pronounce that. Salt Community, uh, it doesn't matter. It's in Ontario, Canada, you can see it on the website. Uh, also, November 4th, it's going to be playing at the Denver Film Festival. November 6th, that will be the last showing at the Denver Film Festival. It's going to be in New York. New York City going to be there on for Doc New York City on November 10th. That should be really interesting. I think the director and the producer are flying out to that. I currently am not flying out to that one. And that one would be kind of a mess anyway, because if I got back from that, I would have to turn around and go right to Denver. November 22nd, it's going to be in, of all places, Estonia. That's a country, folks. Uh, we're big in Estonia. We're going to be playing there the 22nd and the 29th of November, and then the last showing so far until, we might have a few more in December, but the last showing so far will be December 9th, also going to be in Ontario, Canada, at the Guelph Film Festival. That's G-U-E-L-P-H. So check all those showings out. Those screenings are going to be at uh, BehindTheCurveFilm.com. Lot of fun. I encourage everybody to check it out if they get a chance. And let's see if there was anything else. Sorry, the peanut gallery is commenting. And Brian from Humana Story is commenting. And the phone number to call in, sorry, I haven't rattled it off. The last call was pretty long. It's going to be 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998 before we go into segment three. And if I pick you up now, we'll probably have to carry you over. In fact, oh boy, there's Ontario, Canada. I don't know. Should I pick them up? Okay, Ontario, Canada. And I know I'm not supposed to list the city, but you got three minutes. What's happening? Uh, it's, it's short, Mark. Uh, Sault Ste. Marie is what you tried to say. Sault Ste. Marie? Sault Ste. Marie. Is, okay. Uh, Where is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More north than uh, Niagara Falls, which is on the border. Well, apparently, but, uh, uh, we're showing up there. <laughs> so at, at the Sioux, at Sault Ste. Marie in Ontario, Canada. We uh, we've we've done quite a few things yep. in Canada. I mean, well, as you know, the the world premiere was in Toronto, obviously, and that was oh that yes, was a lot yes. Of, uh, but where okay, where is Guelph? G U E L P H. Uh, Guelph. <laughs> Fine. Uh, that's Guelph. Closer to Toronto. Uh, okay. Guelph. It's, Guelph. Uh, before you go from Niagara Falls to uh, Toronto. Oh, cool. But it's definitely not Sault Ste. Marie. Hmm. So, uh, All right, Toronto so is... You'd say if you were in Ontario, you'd go to Guelph first rather than Sault Ste. Marie. And how do you get Sioux out of that? Uh, I would definitely. Because it's spelled... <laughs> it's spelled S-A-U... S-O-U-L-T? S-A-U. Well... L-T. It's uh, it's French. We have a, a French population, so oh, that's carried over right, right, slightly. Right. 
See, I thought they all lived yeah. in Montreal. But, I didn't uh, know they actually kind of went over to Ontario. That's, that, that's not exactly true because when I flew to Canada <laughs> several times, uh, of course, all the airlines, they do all their announcements twice. Once in English and once in French. And that's so fun because I like listening to them twice. And especially the second time in a language I don't understand. So uh, 30 seconds till we go to the music. Anything else that uh, you would like to clarify on since you were listening to that? Uh, not really. But uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, the, uh, the Joe Jackson coming yes, up. Yeah. All right, uh, are you fine. going live with Patricia tomorrow? Uh, yes, Patricia and I live, are uh, live on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Yes, thank you for that. And I will announce that as soon as we come back from break as well. I forgot, but I, have, I haven't heard. Awesome. Usually Patricia bugs me about that. She pokes me on that. Anyway, we'll be back in three <laughs> that's, minutes. That's what I've been here for. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> Love you, man. Right. Take care. Frequency Radio is your number one. You are now tuned into the Truth Frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. We're doing call-in. Phone number is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. And one of the listeners sent me a message through Skype. I should read it. Question for tonight. And I know we're doing it the second half of the show, but that's fine. If there is a good segue, have you ever seen clouds cross behind the moon? It's nearly full tonight, and I happened to catch the reflection on the small lake outside. So I wondered, I think I have, so how about you? I can't speak for myself. I have never seen that, but then again, I'm sort of a different kind of guy. I go out with night vision binoculars that come from Russia and look at uh, what I perceive in the sky as not satellites. Not the way they're moving. And again, you want to see weird stuff. Remember the movie, the 80s movie, They Live? Yeah, pick up a pair of night vision binoculars, something like five power or better. Gen 1, you don't have to go with Gen 2 or anything like that. And look up the sky. It will look completely different. You're going, wow. Because most of the things that are flying around there, you cannot see with the naked eye. And it's not the magnification. It's the the brightness. I mean, your eyes, even when your eyes are really, really well adjusted, it doesn't do justice to night vision binoculars. So there you go. And if you guys want to know which one, I'm not going to endorse one necessarily. The one uh, I like more than others, you can, I mean, there's tons that are out there. It just how, depends how much money. But the best bang for the buck is probably going to be Night Owl uh, in 5X. And I think they're made in Belarus. All right. Well, let's pick up some phone calls, shall we? Let's go to 845 area code. Ready for this, guys? Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. There you go. Is it any better? Yeah, it's good. Tried it without the uh, earpiece. Sorry, I'm parked out on the runway. Really? You're not gonna you're not gonna follow up with the vagabond shoes? Oh, with the vagabond shoes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love that line yeah. better because you're actually, you know, you're from that part of part of the country, so that accent is absolutely natural to you. 
But yeah, and and it's so funny because the first time I heard it, I never noticed how he really said it, and then I was listen, really listening to it because you know you always are sweet right. and singing to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I, I laughed. I was like, he says vagabond. <laughs> well, I don't get. <laughs> believe it or not. East Coast is is a harder nut to crack when it comes to conspiracy stuff for whatever reason, and so I don't get that. Like, if you if somebody calls from New York or L.A., I generally will pick up the phone because I don't get a lot of calls from either of those, and those are pretty heavy media places. But very few calls do I get directly from from New York City. By the way, did you know? Did you pick up on that? That the um, uh, it's going to be showing uh, in New York City down at the Cinepolis. Yeah, I heard that. Where? Uh, Cine, Cinepolis, 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 the- Chelsea in New York, New York at 8 p.m. on the 10th. When do you wait? When do you take off? Uh, I leave 12th, 13th on the 13th. OK, so it's Tuesday. three days, three days before it's on the 10th and it's at the Cinepolis. Yeah, that, would be, that would be Saturday, I think. Right? OK, uh, 8, 8 p.m. New York. Uh, it, it, it probably will be your chance to see it if you're going to if you want to see it before everybody else, because you won't catch it in Denver because it's in Denver the week before you get there. So I, I will I'll, I'll put it I'll post it or um, peanut gallery. I'll post it in your Skype chat if you want the details. Mm-hmm. But if you get a chance, uh, yeah, we'll you know, make it. It'd be, it'd be, be kind of cool because that way you can actually be one of the you know the few people uh, and, and you have time. I'm pretty sure it hasn't sold out yet. So, I mean, the L.A. one sold out, but for a completely different reason, because it wasn't because of Flat Earthers. It was because a lot of the, your Hollywood types were checking it out to see what can be done with it. You know, it's like, OK, what can, what, yeah, well, what can we stuff, what, uh, quote? I got a quote for you uh, from the peanut gallery. The man with a new idea is a crank until that idea succeeds. Yep. That's from Mark Twain. And that happens all the time. I mean. How many, how many examples, everything from FedEx to light bulbs. Heck, my favorite, and this is for your, your debunkers out there, my favorite, because you know, when, when people say, well, science is never really wrong. You know, like when Neil deGrasse Tyson said that science is, is true whether or not you believe in it. And I know what he was saying, but when, my favorite was uh, Lord William Kelvin. You know, the guy, the, the father of thermodynamics. You know, the absolute temperatures are named after him. And people use his name every day, but he is also known for something very dubious. And he said uh, later in his career that airplanes would never work. He said it was just not going to happen as they're inventing airplanes. He's saying this <laughs> and, you know, and they were they were flying before he died. And uh, it was it, it was it was just irritating to me. And even uh, like, like um, you remember the the uh, the periodical Popular Mechanics? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They they said ten years after the the first planes were going off that there's no future in planes. I mean, we we hear this <laughs> constantly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even Bill Gates said his famous quote, and every software developer knows this one is that 640k is enough for anybody. That's all we really need. Because he just had no vision whatsoever. It's like basically DOS. <laughs> DOS. No one needs anything more than DOS. That's it. And it's like, wow, there's yeah, your vision. Good. There's your it's vision. Then go to run. <laughs> so, uh, and by the oh way, Peanut God. Gallery, it's Peanut cool. Gallery has one more quote: uh, "Science does not lie; scientists do." Yeah, that's the truth. Right? Because the truth is the truth is the truth. It's just people like to alter it. Exactly. Hey, did um, I went to the movies tonight? Um, we saw um, Smallfoot. Oh yeah, how was that? And the, it was a total conspiracy movie. Holy, crap. the Yetis live on the flat Earth. They they mm-hmm. had exactly their mount was floating. It was on top of four creatures. I forget, I forget if it was elephants or yaks. Oh and yeah, which is which nothing. is the flat Earth model? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, the old flat Earth model, I should say. Crazy. And then the characters, the Yetis themselves, the reason or the whole movie is that they're conspiracy theorists. 
and they're looking for a small foot. That's the whole thing, the premise. Yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting. My my son and my wife both kept looking at me as we're watching it, and I'm like, holy crap, this is all conspiracy stuff. Right. They they even threw in space. They they weaseled in space somehow. I, I don't even know how they managed that. It was broken to song, and then all of a sudden they were in space. That was a little weird. Uh, how but, aggravating. You know, it's a movie. It's programming. Right. Right. Crazy. I, I have a quote for you. Yeah. You cannot prove the theory with considerable experiments, but one experiment is enough to deny all theories. And that was our buddy Albert Einstein. Mm. I will say this, uh, despite what people think about his reputation, you know, was he, how, how much legitimacy, he was probably the most quoted scientist ever. Ever. The man was, yeah. extre- I mean, I think he was more quotable than Mark Twain. Uh, you know, Tyson can't hold a candle to, to Einstein's uh, stuff. And it's Carl Sagan, yeah, he had some gems, but I mean, Einstein has stuff that they use on freaking greeting cards now. You know, like uh, my one of my favorite is uh, clever, clever stuff. Like uh, gravity cannot be held responsible for people falling in love. It's like wow, nice. That's that's, that's they, smooth. They even, they even brought up gravity in the uh, thing as, a, and they said, well, it's just a theory. It is just a theory in the movie. <laughs> that's, yeah. Again, people. They, she totally people, said that. They, some. Somebody asked me at, at the Q&A two nights ago, which was up in Bellingham, where they said, you know, what about gravity? You know, what, what's science say about gravity? And I said, look, it's really not much different what they say and what we say. Science says it's some magical molecular force that pulls things down. And we and, and I know we have some people that say it's completely density. Uh, my argument for that, which you've heard me say in other things, is that I think it's partly density of course you know we're swimming in a you know thin version of water you know n4o but it's it's only partially density and the reason why i say that is that if you're in a fighter plane and you pull straight up something's pinning you to that seat and it's not coming through that windshield so don't don't tell me it's all density and then then i had somebody come back when they heard that and they say well you're saying that's the same you know if you're driving in a a sports car and you punch it sideways i go well actually actually, that you're just talking about the same thing it's just sideways sideways g-force compared to you know straight up and and so but but again i get i'm not gonna you know of course of course you know i like i like the density argument i think it's really really great especially in an enclosed compressed system i just don't think it's entirely part of it um, you know, I mean, there has to, there's still some force, something that's still causing the up down. Exactly. You know, and and the, I've, you've the heard arguments like that between, way. you've heard arguments between globalists and flat earthers and, and neither sides that the globalists are saying, yeah, but what's pulling it down? And somebody says density. It's like, no, 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 no. Even in density, what's pulling it down? <laughs> because even if right. you have it's levels of density, pulling. something, you know, what, con- uh, you know what? I just came up with it just now. What controls the density? What, uh, what, what ah, is the, okay. what is the factor? What controls the layers of density? And it's like, okay, there still has to be another force there. Sorry. It just has to be same, same thing with the, I'm sorry. I, I hate to ramble, but I do the, um, That's okay. when, when people say, well, there's no dome and I say, well, then you still run into that problem of where's the, you know, how's the atmosphere not being shredded? That whole thing. You know, then then you run into the same problem as right. the globe. So the dome makes that question a whole bunch easier, doesn't it? But I and I know people they all say the same thing. It's like, well, yeah, but you don't want to you don't don't fence me in. Seriously, there's the T-shirt. You know, don't don't fence me in. No dome. No dome. It's like, yeah, yeah, I no get dome. it. You don't you don't like you like to be free, man. Don't be all harshing on my mellow, Captain. Bring down. I get that. But come on. Think yeah. think practically <laughs> for a, a little bit. So. Captain Bring Down. <laughs> You've never heard that? That's good. He better he better not fucking show up in Denver. Who? Dude, that's gonna be crazy. Who? Captain Bring Down. <laughs> oh, is that what we're gonna call him now? Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know if he's he, gonna because he wears a uniform. No, I no, he's gonna show. He's gonna he's gonna show. I he guarantee it. It, it. No, no, he'll show. If you're talking about the same guy I'm talking oh, you about. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, the, well, what I announced in chat well, we'll earlier. Yeah, no, he'll he'll show because 
the, look, the media it didn't la- ever since the Bob Globusters piece came out, all the local media have already been talking about it. They're all going to be there. All the networks are going to be there this time, and they're going to send full teams. And he knows this. And he, you're talking about a guy that lives for the publicity, and he's going to show up media, for it. Right? Yeah, it's like, and right. why, why wouldn't he? Honest to God, I'd be surprised if the whole parking lot wasn't a circus. You know, with all sorts of people doing things, you know, elephants and the bearded lady and people juggling torches. It just might be. It just might be. Wow. <laughs> It'll make. And really, wow. I, I don't mind. I, mean, I don't I don't mind because, look, it's a it's like fine. It gives the media something else to do it when it's like, oh, yeah, let's go talk to Chuckles out in the parking lot. OK. Yeah, I mean, honestly, at this point, I still agree 100 percent that. Any media is good media, whether it's bad or not. You know, I mean, I think when it turns into a serious discussion and that people are willing to actually do it in the open, then the mockery and all that stuff is will be full on insulting to do that. You've heard right now we got to expect it. It's still still in the infancy. There was a, and you heard me say this, there, the, one of the early interviews, one of the interviews I did when I was up in Canada for some urban rap station, I think in Detroit or something like that, one of M&M stations. And the producer after the interview was over gave me, uh, you know, he, he, he broke it down and it was a good perspective. And I hadn't quite thought of it exactly like that, where he says, he says, look, he goes from, produ- from a producer standpoint, it doesn't matter who loves it and who hates it. As long as they're talking about it, it's all they care about. <laughs> in fact, in fact, they like people who hate it even more sometimes because they're even more passionate. And we do have that. We yeah. have the haters. We, we, we have the right. If uh, you love something, you'll tell two people. If you hate something, you will tell a thousand people. Yeah, absolutely. No. No, no, that's no, how you're absolutely that, right. That that's is, how the that's the, the A lister. That's how the A listers at the Oscars found out. They, you know, we, they, a hater walked in and I'm not going to name her <laughs> and, and says, let me tell you right. about what I, you know, I heard from a family member and it was, you know, and she infected a whole bunch of people right then and there without, yeah. we didn't even have to ask her to do it. She just did it. So I know it's so, uh, it's so nuts I know. and I love how. Like how people talk about it and it just, it sticks. It's, it's funny how that rattling paint can, man. Rattling the paint can. In there. Yeah. Yeah. You're it's not there. shaking it up. Any, anyway, I've got, a, and, I've got, still have some calls. I got to grab yeah. any shout outs you want to do. All right. Uh, shout out to everybody. Love you, brother. You're awesome. Uh, shout out to the peanut gallery. It, it is a real person, right? I'm not just hallucinating. <laughs> well, yeah, but it could be a girl. So, just be, be aware I, of that. That's okay. Yeah, I, I, hey, you know, I don't know hey. why. Uh, I was going to use a Gary Busey joke and say, I don't know why women are so pissed. They have half the mo- money and all the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's good. All right. All right I'll I love you, everybody. Shout out, big shout out to Karen. I love uh, her. Go beta. All right. Let's jump over to 302 area code. 302, you're on with Strange World right now. Hello, 302. Oh, don't make me say it. Oh, and they hung up. Okay, look, if you're going to call in, you just want to listen, call the other number, 605-472-9131. Otherwise, you just get put in the list, and I just keep checking boxes. So, sorry about that, Georgetown, Delaware. Let's pick up 216 area code. 216, you're on with Strange World right now as we speak. Just you and me. Don't be nervous, but don't screw it up either. Oh, I'm nervous. (laughs) No. <laughs> you're not. How you nervous. doing, Mike? <laughs> I'm doing fine. How are you? Hey, you get to. <laughs> I'm all right. Do you get to watch uh, a lot of videos? I mean, I know you're busy and all, but you I have to. to see this one recently. What? Which one? Well, okay. The the one from the Austin radio station with the debate. Uh, yeah, the impromptu debate between uh, the men from Ram impromptu. And- 
Yeah. Boy, and, was that a setup or what? Well, okay. If you guys don't know what we're talking about here. It was a radio station. That I thought he filmed. handled it pretty good, too. He did, considering what the hell he was up against. Um, they right. draw, a, a new guy entered the fray, and I remember hearing about this guy a while back. There's not very, very few <laughs> civilian people that claim to be astronauts, and his name was Richard Garriott. He, hopefully, I, like Marriott with a G. And he, he made his... He did that awful uh, low or subtle, too, the way they did that, you know? I, well, uh, our guy Andrew didn't didn't know he was going to be there. I mean, you could see it on his face, and they right. filmed it video. It wasn't just an audio interview; they filmed it. And Andrew, it's like you know, here's right. a guy that says, "Oh yeah, by the way, I spent what two weeks on the ISS, and I paid thirty million dollars to do it with video game money because right. this guy developed. He was. I will give him this. Uh, he is a heck of a developer. He developed uh, Ultima. The, the series which blossomed into Ultima Online and all the other Ultima series. Money. I didn't pl- I didn't play Ultima myself, but whatever. I was a Blizzard guy and a um, Fallout guy. So, yeah, they were bouncing. And he had a notebook with him of all sorts of little notes. Now, that being said, there were... And, and yeah, I, right. There were some things in that interview that bothered me. One, he brought up the Sticks and Shadows argument. And when our guy chimed in with, That's, yeah. Why is that uh, always the first thing they come up with? It's well, garbage. There's, o- there's only, you got to remember, man, if you don't use NASA, and it's, I've used this on, on people. It's like, look, if you throw NASA out. The right, it's hard me, to prove. Well, well, but yeah, but there's only two arguments you can really start with. One is ships going into the horizon because it's the easiest. And the other <laughs> is sticks and shadows because it's the really there, there's not many more after that that people even remotely know. Uh, it, you know, people people have kind of a recollection recollection of how sundials work. So sticks and shadows kind of. But then you say, oh, it's Eratosthenes. And they and so anyway, so we he says that name, right? Our, our guy says that Eratosthenes. And right. that guy he knows exactly and, what he's talking about. And that guy didn't know the name. That's what threw me. He, he's like, he's like, I, I've never <laughs> I heard that name. It's like, it's like, wait a minute. You you brought up the, the Six and Shadows argument. How do you not know this name? I mean, it's his it's right. his experiment. And that was that was surprising to me. Um, I thought he did fine. Remember the station? It wasn't one against one. Uh, the, it was three against one. The station was right. Not I mean, the guy who's doing the interview who's brought these guys together. He said he used to work for the guy. It's like, well, this is just, yeah. yeah. But he handled yeah, himself called, so he well, though, favor. I thought he called in a favor and, and okay, there's another thing real quick. And I got to bring this up, which is, here's the other thing that bo- bothered me about that interview. We're talking about a guy that supposedly spent 30 million of his own dollars and years to get up on the ISS, right? Not only that, but he was the son of an astronaut that did his tour back in the 70s, the late or the middle to the late 70s, right? And so he's, yet he's indoctrinated. Uh, well, not no, not just that, but he should have been no, look the other way. And that is if if you're you're talking about a son of an astronaut who aspires to be an astronaut that buys his way in, and yet he showed almost no outrage at all. You're basically calling him a liar and his family a liar to his face. And I saw nothing, no physical signs that, I mean, this guy should have been jumping over the desk. This guy should have never been in the room to begin with. He'd be like, how, he didn't. I mean, I'd have been in his face. I mean, you're calling me a liar? Yeah, yeah. He would have been like, it's like, how, you know, how dare you? Are you, he should have used the line, you know, are you calling my father? A liar, you know, a father who he admired so much, apparently, <laughs> that he became right. an astronaut himself. You know, he should have had clenched fists. His eyes should have flashed. I mean, yeah, his arms were crossed, but I think that's just because he didn't know what he was getting into. Uh, but and, but, and why I – okay, why did I hate Richard more than other people? Because astronauts, real astronauts, are military guys, right? You know, they're, they're Air Force. So, I mean, right. high, high-ranking right. Air Force people. They're doing stuff because they're ordered to do it. They signed a disclosure agreement. Richard, he had no such excuse. Right? He volunteered to to be a puppet in this case. So I hope, and yeah, first time we've right. seen him in three years, I hope he shows up for other things. I really do. So there you go. I thought that was so disgusting. I mean, it's like, oh, uh, I've done it, you know, so believe me kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but again, you, you is can't, that all you got? It, I, I thought Andrew did fine. Uh, it, it, I I hope to I seriously I hope that Richard is dumb enough 
to to grab to to get on with somebody else, but it probably won't happen because he only did this because it was local and the and the station guy called in a favor. That was that was the only right. reason. It's like, hey, you want to get in on something? Get in on this. Uh, and it, and at the same time, yeah. it could have been a lot worse. You know, they could have grabbed you know just anybody. And but I mean, Andrew made. I mean, look, right. man, uh, the man made some really really good videos about flat Earth. He knows his stuff, but uh, it's okay. He, he'll be fine. The part where I knew it was going to be good is when uh, he said, you know, pretty much the reason why, you know, I, I've been there. I'm an astronaut, you know, and he right. and he pretty much just called him a, a liar to his face almost, you know, as yeah. best he could. But I knew he was legit once he did that. Cause that was the first thing I thought. I was like, uh, like yeah. I don't believe you because you, you know, let an me, astronaut. <laughs> let me let me end it with this because we're going to go to music here pretty soon. But I, I, I right. want to get this out because people will add, will mention this from time to time. They'll say, are you calling this whatever, whoever this person is a liar? You know, an astronaut. Stanton Friedman asked me that. You know, he said, I had an astronaut write write the forward to my last book. Are you calling him a liar? And I said, look, <clears throat> I'm not saying they're bad people that wear black hats and twirl handlebar mustaches. Right, right. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he did it for God and country. But yes, he did lie. Look, people lie. They lie all the time. It, people, it, it, take your pick. It, uh, politics, name, business. Name anything, people yes. do it. Sports, entertainment, journalism, science, people right. lie. I, I, look, look, people say, well, no, you're talking about extensive lie. People couldn't keep up that sort of lie. I'm going, really? Look at Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong <laughs> lied to the media every month. They had him. They li- And he went on press conferences and just lied on camera t- to the world every month for seven years. And then only yep. when they had him dead to rights, only then did he say, yeah, I was lying the whole time. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is like, <laughs> why, well, don't don't tell me. Oh, that OK, it, well, yeah. yeah. Don't tell me that big lies can't happen. And and that was him just doing it for money and fame, you know, doing it. You know, when you've got a gun to your head, when it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you say anything, you will be brought up on trees and we'll lock you in a room and throw away the room. Yeah. Don't don't tell me that people that's can't what I'm lie. trying to say that people will do anything right. for money or to save their self-interest. And that's a shame. Yeah, they will. Right. I mean, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a human weakness and that is power corrupts and we will lie to protect our own interests. Plain and simple. Absolutely. Uh, the, well, let me end on this. We got 30 seconds and that is, you know, well, not science. Science has integrity. I go, really tell me about all the times that science rushed products to market like lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, asbestos and of course the cigarette scientist that said that cigarettes were perfectly safe because as you know lab geeks need porsches too now science is no different they're just men anyway we got to go to break thank you thank you for calling any shout outs before you go you got five seconds nah i just love the show keep it up brother thanks man. brother thanks for calling later in. and there is the music three minutes we'll come back last segment last chance to call in Listening to the Truth Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. Strange World Part Four of Four. That concludes a Justin Bieber three-hour wineathon, followed by the Taylor Swift Hour of Power. But just then, we had Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. Okay, we're doing the phone lines. Last chance to call in two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. That's two one three two three 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 nine nine eight. There's a lot of threes in there. Four threes actually. I was hoping there'd be three threes. 
Who should we go to? Let's go to 850. Area code 850. You were on with Strange World during the last segment. Don't you feel lucky? I do, Mark. Hi, this is Constance, a.k.a. Quietly Riot. Hey! How are you doing tonight? I am doing really <laughs> well. How are, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm having fun with uh, Fly Earth Night School and um, finally got to meet some of the folks. Awesome. And I had a blast. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I can't go in person, but it's been great to do it over the internet. It's, yeah, but the internet's uh, gotten a lot con- better. So. <laughs> yeah. That's really, really Hey, cool. guys. Um, we're, we're going old school, though, in this day and age. Would you believe it? <laughs> we're talking about how stuff goes down. And uh, for a while in Twitter, in Twitter land, Literally. I've been talking about what are you going to do if, if you lose contact with people through here? You've got to come up with a plan. So right. I kept pushing people, you know, get to know some people next to you. Right. And so when I heard Shauna and Mark and them talking about pen pals, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. Nice. So um, she suggested um, that they take, everybody take three by five cards with your name screen name, address, phone number, you know, contact info right. and pass them out at the convention oh, at the conference yeah. to the people that you want to swap addresses with and then write, write real letters and, and flat smack or truth smack the uh, carrier service on the, on the outside of the envelopes. Get of creative. Course. So of we're going to have fun. <laughs> that's great. I like that idea. Yeah. That's really, that sounds really fun. So, mm-hmm. Cool. Any, so, but else? I just wanted to give you a big old, big old hug and shout out oh. to everybody in the chat room and listening now or later. <laughs> right God on. God bless everybody. Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very right. much for, for calling in. And uh, we, I'm sure thank we will you. talk soon. We have a couple more shows, as you know, before the you conference. Bet. And uh, Yes, sir. So I, will look, I will look for <laughs> All you. All right. Yes, sir. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. All right, let's jump right over. We're going to do a speed round. Let's jump over to 851 area code. 851, what is happening, man? What's up, bro? How's it going? Uh, it's going pretty well. Pretty well. Yo, so the other day I was helping uh, Sydney with a problem about, like, <laughs> the, the, uh, about, the lean of buildings and stuff like that, right? Sure. And we were talking about the circumference of the earth and everything. And mm-hmm. so I typed into Google. I was like, what's the circumference of the earth divided by 360? And I was look, I was thinking that I was going to get a number, right? Right. And, and no. Would you like to hear the explanation? Because I think you might be surprised. All right. Throw it at me. It says, since a full circle is 360 degrees, the arc from Alexandria to Syene is thus approximately 150th of a full circle. The sun angle above divided by 360. Therefore, the circumference of the Earth is 50 times the distance from Alexandria to Syene. Now, does Alexandria to Syene ring a bell? Yeah, it's the sticks and shadows argument. Yeah. So once again, it goes back, like when your call was earlier tonight, was saying, was talking about Aristophanes, and yeah. it keeps going back to those stupid sticks and shadows. Right. Nobody's done a modern uh, day sticks and shadows argument. Yeah. Right. Well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter though. Here's here's why. Uh, the sticks and shadows argument is good, except that you are determining you've already put a given on the light source as far as the distance and the size of the light source you know what i mean meaning the sticks and shadows yeah, argument you've already, i've said you've already made an assumption right yeah remember the sticks and shadows argument and any scientist or any physicist or anyone that that does this they they know this already is that it works just as well if the object is very close and very small by comparison it's the old argument we've done since we were kids and that is if you hold a pen up to your face right you know like a you know a pencil we'll say a pencil pencil up to your face is that pencil really really huge 
or is it just really close to your eye? Well, it's just close to your yeah. eye, obviously, because we know what a pencil is. You take a generic object like a ball and suspend it far away. Human beings are notoriously terrible at two things. And I think it's deliberate. I think it's part of the makeup of this place. One is we have a horrible sense of distance, which is why we have spotting scopes and, and all sorts of range finders and stuff. We're terrible at it, especially when it comes to generic objects. And the other thing we're really bad at is relative motion. We can't tell you, and you, you've heard me give this argument, and that is you're stop and go traffic, you're zoning out, and all of a sudden you can't tell if the car next to you is moving or you let your foot off the brake. You can't tell. You're like, uh, you panic for a second because you, you can't tell. We're terrible. Or if you're next, you got trains next to each other and stuff like that. So the sticks and shadows argument, you can only go so far with it. And then eventually oh, you guys yeah, say, no. there's, it's and, trash. But, and don't don't forget that ninety percent of the po- and probably ninety five percent of the population don't doesn't even know the sticks and shadow argument. They don't know what it means at all. Uh, the only one that, that's boats going going over the horizon. It's something that I said in one of my things that I did this weekend, which was I go look. Let's face it. One of the reasons why flat Earth resonates so well is because we came up with a simpler explanation of the Earth than the globe. Uh, I, I use the Sun Tzu art of war thing where he said that people are like water. We always take the path of least resistance, which means we always take the easiest path. The flat earth model is easier. Plain and it, it is. It's just easier. The globe has so much math around it. Geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum physics. There's so much math around it. The average person has no freaking idea how to even describe it. And so when we come at him, we say, oh, yeah, by the way, flat earth, that's your ticket right there. There are a lot of people that just jump on it because it's like, yeah, I totally get that. So then that my, my point is, if any scientists out there are listening, it's like until you come up with an explanation that's simpler than what we have, we're just going to destroy you. There's nothing you can do. Uh, people will always choose the easier option. You think, no, that's not always true. Really? Then why are they texting instead of making phone calls? Because it's easy. Yeah. Well, that goes back to Occam's razor, right? The easiest, the most simple explanation explanation is usually the easiest. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Well, and the the whole motion thing, right? How they tell us that we can't feel we're spinning. Right. Uh, I like to I like to throw at them. Well, then why do so many people need Dramamine? (laughs) Wait. Yeah. Because like they, oh, they, people they say are that very, we can't that, feel that motion. Oh yeah, your your inner ear mechanism is very very sensitive. I can't read in the back seat of a car. I can't I can't play cards below deck on a boat. Uh, and I don't care what kind of boat it is. I cannot do it. It's because in my inner ear. I it's just you know I, I amusement park rides are like death to me. You don't be, don't put me on the gravitron. You know don't don't put me on the scrambler. Ugh horrible memories of that stuff so yeah of course people yeah. are very very sensitive but when they're on planes it's in fact i find it fascinating that they keep mentioning planes it's like no when you're up in a plane and you're on cruising altitude and there's no turbulence that plane is perfect nothing it is not moving it is not going down it is not going up and you know the second it does not just by the engine sound just that slight 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 tip or dip you know every you know you know it immediately so yeah Anyway, if they gain, if they gain or decrease any altitude, you feel that like, yep, you yeah, absolutely do completely. Uh, yeah, yeah man. I uh, <laughs> stupid drama. mean though. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Dra- yeah. Why do they sell drama? mean, if people, if people can't feel motion. Yeah. It's like, well, that's exaggerated. It's like, is it, is it exaggerated? Oh. No, it's not because I mean, the average person, uh, your body adjusts for that, for those movements, those slight movements to where you don't get sick. Right. If you don't have this, then you're screwed. You'll, you feel everything. Right. Uh, but yeah, dude. Um, all right. You know what? Hey, I'm going to get off of here and let you get to all right, man. your call, hey, bro. Thanks, thanks for calling in, and uh, we will talk soon, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, man. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. All right, a uh, quick question from the chat, Skype chat. Uh, okay, I'm curious. What do you feel about the Aurora Borealis? And you spelled Aurora wrong. Nice one there. If not from a spinning ball and a magnetic field plane, 
while we are in Lich King area. Oh, these are my guildmates. Great. Uh, my Flat Earth Guild in, in Warcraft. The uh, I think the Aurora Borealis is just part of the light show. No different than a blood moon or the sun and the moon and the stars. It's just a wonderful tapestry slash clock system slash signs and wonders. Okay, we still got time for a few more calls. Let's go to 910. We're going to do 910-802 and then 248. And we'll probably end with 248, I think. We'll see. 910, you're on with Strange World right now. What is happening? Hey, what's up, Mark? Hey. So I did want to talk. I did want to talk about stars, but uh, first, I I think everyone should start, you know, videoing, uh, interviewing some of your meteorologists, your local meteorologists. I had mm-hmm. this person. I'm listening. I'm listening to this woman, and she says these aren't rain clouds. It's not going to rain. It's clear. However, all this stuff you're seeing on radar is just the clutter in the air, and I'm thinking the clutter. The clutter? The clutter? I mean, is that a meteorologist term, the clutter? I've never heard a meteorologist say clutter. I was so frustrated. <laughs> oh, I was so frustrated. But going to the stars, uh, let's just think for a minute. Every, everyone's talking about the sun and luminescence, right? Right. The star in a jar? Yeah. Okay. So it's not just the light. There. When you look at even if you even if you believe it's sun luminescent, that light's within a vessel. Okay, so for instance, I brought I brought it up before. The light bulb's clear when it's off. I can see through it. When it's on, I can't see through it because of the light. So, what makes a star fall? We need to think about these things. Of uh, you know, if there is a dome. Are things going up there and and being attracted to the stars and getting heavy and then it's falling out the dome? Yeah. Are they really just bulbs? I mean, what is it? Mm -hmm. Because it obviously falls. Right. You know? Right. I mean, it's tough to say because we're talking about a technology that is still, even though we consider ourselves advanced, that is still way beyond us. Uh, uh, here's Here's something I like to throw out at people. Uh, because most people don't know because you'd never have, unless you're rich, you don't have a reason to buy this. You've ever, you ever heard of the saying, um, uh, as, as useful as a, uh, sub, uh, screen door in a submarine or a skylight in a basement type thing. Right, right, right. Uh, mm-hmm. they can actually make skylights now. There's a company out there called Colux, C-O-E-L-U-X. They're out of Europe and they made a skylight that you can put anywhere and, it is basically an LCD screen, but it's very, very high end, and it has a special uh, gas filter in it. And you swear to God that you are looking at a sun in a clear blue sky. And you can put it, it's meant for like uh, condos if you're not on the top floor. You can, they put them in condos, like in the second, you know, the second to the top and the third from the top. People walk underneath them, swear, if you do it on a sunny day, swear they are, are walking under a beautiful sky and the sun will move with you, you know, like you're walking underneath it and the sun kind of follows you, the perspective. And right. they can do they can do that now. We can do this now. We can we can create an artificial sun on a screen that can fool people. So what can you do yeah. with the next and, and sorry, go ahead. And I've heard of the uh I've heard of the three D imagery and you know, being oh, yeah. uh projected in, into the atmosphere or or whatever above you and yeah. you can see it. I understand yeah. I understand all that. But if a star falls and I'm watching it fall, I mean, and I understand the dome is like looking at a 3D, whatever the kids used to buy, the 3D DS with a, a curved screen. Right. I understand all that. But what I'm saying is, if, and even I've heard people say when you get higher altitude, the stars disappear, correct? Right. Yep. I've heard that as well. Okay. So, so if that's the case, then what we really have is a light that's encased in a vessel. Yeah. And when you get to a certain level, you're looking at it from a different angle and yep. you can't see the light. Yep. So that's yep. what's Which going is, on. Yeah, but, I absolutely. But it is actually in a vessel. Yeah, yeah, I could I could see that. And then if you again, if you want to go down the biblical path, you know, the funny stuff that no one could figure out, which is, you know, that the stars would actually like a third of the stars would fall to Earth like um, figs shaken from a tree. And, you know, when you're, I I don't care how old you are, when you're listening to that, it's like, how exactly is that working? 
And then you look at this. <laughs> yeah, you look at an yeah. enclosed system, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, it's the it's again, it's the Truman Show, where you know lights are falling from the sky, and you know, of course, right. they're not millions of light years away and giant gaseous bodies. They're just lights in the sky. What I what I tell people yeah, is, they like, look, tore, they would have. Go ahead. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, they would have tore up the ozone, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so. Yeah. That's, anyway, that's it's yeah, it's interesting quick, stuff. Uh, we'll so, eventually we'll figure out more up, about. Hey, what? Real quick, real yeah. quick. When, since you brought up the uh, scripts or whatever, the right. star wormwood is supposed to fall. Does that right. have anything to do with Morgellons? Morgellons? No, nah, I don't think Maybe so. Uh, no, I think the I think wormwood is is supposed yeah. to be a lot more extreme than more Morgellons disease. Uh, if you guys don't know, look up look up the star wormwood. It's part of Revelation. And you will right. see, uh, I, again, I'm kind of curious. It's like, you know, the mountain, a mountain falling from the sky, you know, but, you know, of course, you know, big rock, but what is it and where did it come from and where does it hit? And, uh, it's interesting. Uh, but yeah, I also think it works better in, in an enclosed system than a flat system along with just about every seriously, not let me spend 60 seconds on this because <clears throat> I don't talk about the Bible often. But let's face it, Rob Skeeb has done some amazing work and his website, testingtheglobe.com, and it is a flat earth book, plain and simple, I, the, which is why I mentioned the clues. I did a, my version of the Tower of Babel. Where's the Tower of Babel going if it's on a s- basketball, if it's a needle sticking into a basketball flying around the sun? Where is, how is that reaching heaven? Uh, the story of Joshua, how he asked God to, to hold the sun and the moon in the sky for an extra day so he could kill more people. And every other phrase, you know, the, the earth is fixed, immovable, blah, blah, blah. The only phrase that one one verse in the whole book and people are holding on to it like it has veto power is Isaiah forty twenty two. That's it. And it says, yeah. he who sitteth upon yeah. the circle of the earth. And every you know, flat earthers know this. You know, jumping, it's like, no, circle is not globe. It's not ball. It's not sphere. It's circle. A dinner plate is a circle. A hubcap, a roulette wheel. They're all circles. So don't, and yeah. you can't say that Isaiah 40, 22 beats everything else. It does not have veto power over everything, including Genesis 1, 6, the firmament. You can't. You mentioned, Sorry. you mentioned one. You mentioned one scripture that everyone forgets something about it. When what? Joshua asked for the sun to stand still, more stones that day, more stones came out of heaven and killed the enemy that the sword did of the Israelites. So Ooh. when that sun came to a screeching halt, when the yeah. sun came to a screeching halt in that dome, rocks flew. That's you interesting. Slam on brakes on a, on a road. So, I mean, that would, that would make sense. Like that. No, I like that because, you know, in Chris Pontius's models, the sky moves, physically moves. And exactly. uh, yeah, if it was a physical structure, then yeah, if you slammed on the brakes, there would be a bit of a jolt. So that's, that's fascinating. I like that. I like that a lot. And so when the sun, and think about this, I want someone to bring this up into a study on this. Okay. So when the sun gets smitten, when the sun gets smitten or hit, struck, in right. Revelation, then why does it get hotter? Mm. So, think, good. think about good. that. All right, man. I got to right, pick you. up, see if, but what I can do. But thank you for calling in, and we'll talk soon, okay? All right. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's grab... Uh, I don't know if this is going to be the last one of the night or not. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to 802, but I've got to grab 248. 248, you are on with Strange World. Are you the end of the evening, or are you just an appetizer? Well, actually, from what I understand, you did an interview in my hometown, and I didn't know about it. So I'm looking for an explanation there. I did an interview in your hometown. Oh, when I was doing the, um, <clears throat> I think it was Detroit. I think. And and that would make sense, right? Because Eminem would own stations in Detroit. Eminem would be in Detroit, but was this in the Slim Shady days or... or- uh, yeah, it was shit is his, the station I was calling into was Shady 45. And if Shady 45 is in Detroit, then yes, that's where I would have called in. I called in when I was living in Victoria and it was the most hostile interview ever because <laughs> because it wasn't even supposed to be a call in show. And he, when we took a quick break, they said, look, the, the phones are blowing up. 
the phone lines are just jammed with people that want they basically want a piece of me because the, the people who were listening to me were in cars <laughs> and it was an urban setting and so i had people you can imagine right people you know driving driving around detroit all of a sudden it's like wait what's this guy saying oh i want a piece of him and they called in and just let into me and you know there was no profanity filters or anything like that and it was um damn it yeah yeah it was you should listen to it if you you haven't listened to you haven't listened to the shady 45 yeah. interview no i have not okay well, I, look, I would like to though it is it's on it's on my channel just type in flat, flat earth clues interview in fact i'll find it for you off air uh, but it's Shady 45, S-H-A-D-E 45. And I only found it. It's like, oh, yeah, Eminem owns that station. He did not interview me, of course, because Lord knows what would have happened then. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. It was a good conversation. He's a good guy. But listen, I was told I had to call in today um, to let, after a constant call and mention the, the letter writers brigade that I wanted to share the P.O. box that we have set up for night school. Do Is it. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, do it. All right, so um, we are doing a little P.O. box. It's 39044, sorry, 39044. And that's in Dustin, Oklahoma. Brian is going to take care of things for us. Its uh, zip code is 74839. And as he said, if you write, I will at least write back something to to get us going and we are doing the um the index cards at the conference in denver i also have a postcard stamp that i picked up on a salvation army adventure so if you want to make them cool come find me cool so yeah awesome. that's what we're doing awesome <laughs> that's that's wonderful that's i i i think it's fairly unique i like it. it's old school i'm a i'm a big old school guy so that's awesome. And I'm going to let you go so that you can get to another caller. Have a good night. All right. Shout well, out to then, everybody. Hey, it was nice to hear from you, anonymous female person. <laughs> Why, thank you. All right. Talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Let's jump over. Okay, this is going to be the last call tonight. 802, you're it. You're the last call for tonight. Hi. That's that's my lead in. <laughs> well, that's pressure. <laughs> I'm the last. Uh, okay. okay. Well, okay. All right. Here we go. There are 8 million people listening to you right now. Don't screw up. Don't be nervous. And don't stutter. How's that? <laughs> well, so many topics were discussed that I, yeah, was, I like, my mind was going off. And I'm like, no, stick to what I wanted to say. Okay. And, well, what do you got? You, um, got two, you got two minutes till music hits. Go. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I'm I'm trying to start a local flat Earth group, and I get. I mean, I got a positive response after so many, like you're an idiot, right? Fucking mindless idiot, right? And then this guy says, "Hey, I'm intrigued," and I met him. It was like a like a drug hookup or something. It was weird, but it was drug deal. It was very yeah. kind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, I had your book. I was like, take this. I had a little squishy globe for reference. I had a printout of the AE map. And I was like, here, look, look, look. And I'm like throwing it on him, and I'm trying to like just keep it in my pants and just like he expressed, you know, an interest. And it was a positive thing. It was great. Right. Uh, anyway, it's just after all the negativity, I finally got someone who said, "Hey, you know, in my post, in my in my posting, I put that uh, it's attributed to Einstein." But that's uh, it's okay. T tell you what, let's because you got thirty seconds to work. To no, work no, any music. Condemnation without investigation is, is the, the height, height of, of ignorance. ignorance. Yeah, do t take it to the next. No, that's level. all I put. But that that's cool. And take then he said, "Go ahead." And he said, like, that's, that's what intrigued me. That's why I answered your ad. And I was like, oh, great. So that was positive. But, I mean, I, I, oh, it's just like I wanted, 
do more. I mean, I stamp all my paper currency with a rubber stamp. <laughs> right. You right. know, and I have a, a baseball you know, cap we're, we're with a air on it. Four, three, two. All right. Sorry, man. <laughs> Thanks for uh, letting me bitch. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Wednesday. We're doing it. 3 p.m. Pacific. That's a great honor and privilege for us to be here representing not only the United States. Treat chips could do a better job.